Thanks for joining and welcome back. My name is Darcy and you are watching Unlocking Academic English Vocabulary. This is lesson six and we are in part two of this multi-part lesson series. If you're coming into this video for the first time uh, without watching previous videos, to briefly introduce what this um, lesson series is all about. This is a lesson series that intends to assist uh, independent learners of English improve their accumulation and understanding of academic vocabulary through the study of the structure of words. So at present we are focusing on the structure of words by looking at affixes, prefixes, and suffixes. And um, because we won't be reviewing previously covered information, because each lesson builds upon previous lessons, you should go back to watch this video lesson series from the beginning to get the best benefit from, from this one. So after you've watched this video, go back to the very beginning of the course to get a, go back to the very beginning of the video lesson series to get an understanding of what this course is all about. Um, and um, if any of this feels advanced, uh, don't be discouraged. You can pause these videos, read the contents on screen, rewatch these videos as often as needed. And uh, do watch these videos with a pen at the ready. Uh, this lesson series is all about uh, vocabulary. It's intended to help you build your vocabulary. So as we encounter new and important words, uh, take note. If you have any questions, please do leave a comment, send me a message. I'm happy to provide uh, free downloadable materials and offer a uh, private one-to-one -one consultation, answer your questions. So as I mentioned, uh, at the moment, this is, this is a, a, an all-encompassing, uh, extensive vocabulary course intended for um, sort of intermediate advanced learners um, studying for the purposes of test taking who need to improve their vocabulary. And uh, so we're looking for, um, you know, being able to interpret and infer the meanings of words by analyzing their structure. And an important part of that are affixes, prefixes, and suffixes. So uh, right now we're going through uh, the alphabet from A to Z and focusing in on prefixes and how they, how they work, how they modify the meanings of root words. Um, right now in this lesson we are on the letter F, looking at words with prefixes that begin with the letter F, as in forbid, forget, forgive, forgo, forfeit, and forsake. So four is very commonly seen in English words. However, the number of words containing four as a prefix is actually relatively small. So let's examine some of those words containing four for the purposes of clarifying which words are using four as a prefix and which ones are not. So uh, words such as foreground and forecast, foresee and forward all denote at the front forward moving or in the future. For in the modern day means uh, front. In the original spelling was forth. So for and forth are therefore synonymous. As we can see in uh, the words forward and forthward, these are both words that are in use uh, today and they mean the exact same thing because they come from the same original word, forth. So when we see for, uh, F-O-R-E, um, typically, uh, most likely we're looking at this, this kind of meaning here. The words forecast, foresee, and foretell all denote making predictions of future events, a weather forecast. Now, according to dictionary sources, uh, for used in this sense is not a prefix, but a combining form. Um, we see the word for in therefore, the conjunction therefore. So it can be used at the beginning as in forecast and at the end as in therefore. It's a combining form, not a prefix. And uh, if you don't know what a combining form is, it was discussed in lesson four. Refer to lesson four for more information on combining forms. And we will be uh, returning to com combining forms uh, in the not too distant future. Now, um, when we see form, Derivatives of the word form, uh, which means shape or essence, we can see words like formal, format, former, 
formation and formula. Um, you know, the meaning of form is shape or essence. Now, in this instance, what we are seeing, what we're noticing are the applications of suffixes. So form is a root word and former, format, uh, former, formation. These are, uh, these, these are uh, words with uh, suffixes added and, and formula is another kind of derivative, all belonging to the word family of form, but form is not a prefix. Fort, uh, this original Latin word fortis meant strength, and we can see it in words such as fortress, fort, fortify, once again, applying suffixes. Fort is also a form of spelling denoting the number four, as in forty and fortnite. A fortnight is a um, span of time of the length of 14 nights, like two weeks, a fortnight. Fortune. When we see words like fortune, fortunate, and fortuity, what we are seeing are derivatives of the word fortuna, which was a name given to the Roman goddess of chance and luck. So fortuna is a, a proper noun, a name. Uh, fortune is um, a, a word denoting uh, meaning luck. Now, fortune telling should not be confused with forecasting or foretelling, or the other fort. Uh, this is just another another word family. Fortune, fortuity, fortunate is part of a different word family than the previous covered words. So now, uh, for by contrast is a prefix, and when it is used to denote when it is used, it is used to denote prohibition absention and renunciation or neglect. So it's kind of a negative prefix. Prohibition, absention, renunciation or neglect. So forbid uses the prefix in the prohibitive sense. Prohibit, prohibitive sense. Uh, forfeit and forego and forsaken or forsake are renunciative. So forbid is prohibitive and forfeit, forego and forsake are renunciative. And we will look at these words in this upcoming lesson. Finally, uh, we also see for used as a um, preposition or conjunction. So this is a different word belonging to a different word class, prepositions or conjunctions. We see this word used as a preposition or a conjunction, and there are multiple usages of this word. So I will pay for dinner. Um, the train is leaving for Shanghai. And are you for and against this new proposed legislation? All right, looking at our first word, um, using the prefix for, for bid. The root word bid, means to ask, request, or command. To do the bidding of someone is to carry out a request. The old phrase, bid thee farewell, is a polite way of saying goodbye. At an auction, people bid for the, per uh, for the purchase of rare valuables by offering to pay a certain amount. So bid means to ask or request. Forbid means to refuse to allow. So uh, smoking indoors is forbidden, kind of a negative request, refusing to allow, prohibit. The next word is forget. The root word here, get, means to receive, come to have, or catch something. So get a drink, get sick, get dressed. Forget means to fail to remember an item of information. So the prefix for added to get uh, kind of means to lose. If get means to gain, forget means to lose. Um, fail to remember and mistakenly neglect to do something. A forgotten password, forget to water the plants. The next word is forgive. Here we see the root word give, which means to hand over, as in to transfer possession from one to another. Give. 
and forgive means to cancel a debt. So a give means to uh, you know, transfer pos possession. Forgive means to cancel any kind of debt. And a debt is owing somebody something. If we cause harm or offense to someone in word or action, if we offend somebody somehow, we have to offer an apology to show our regret. The offense can be forgotten after it has been forgiven. The next word is forgo. Here the root word is go, which means to travel from one place to another. To forgo means to go without, or to do without, or to refrain, as in, uh, in times of want economically, we have to forgo many of life's comforts and luxuries, to do without. Forgo the uh, morning coffee, for example, or the muffin, let's say. If you're on a diet, you should forgo carbohydrates, you know, carb-heavy uh, foods as often as possible. Uh, forfeit. So here the root word uh, is taken from French, and its meaning is to transgress or commit a crime or offense. Forfeit, adding the prefix, is similar to forego, to do without, except that, it is, except that it is used to mean to give up in a competition or battle. It means to accept defeat, to forfeit. The tennis player succumbed to injury and had to forfeit the match. Forsake. The root word here, sake, is used as a noun to mean for the purpose or reason for doing something for someone. So we see the phrase, for goodness sake. It's a common phrase used when someone is irate with someone else's bad behavior. Sake. To forsake means to abandon, renounce, or give up, similar to forfeit. A forsaken place is one that has gone to rack and ruin for lack of care. So let's summarize. Forbid, to prohibit, to refuse to allow. Forget, to mistakenly neglect a task, to fail to remember. Forgive, to cancel a debt, to accept an apology for offense. Forgo, to go or do without something. Forfeit, to accept defeat. To give up in competition or battle. To take a loss or penalty. And forsake, to give up, abandon, neglect, forsake. Coming up in future lessons, prefixes, beginnings with the letters H and I. So thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video and you want to support the uh, creation of future content, please remember to leave a like and follow this channel. And uh, I look forward to seeing you in the next lesson. Thank you.